Joshua chapter 3. Joshua chapter 3, verse 1. Early the next morning, Joshua and all the Israelites left Acacia Grove and arrived at the banks of the Jordan River where they camped before crossing. Three days later, the Israelite officers went through the camp giving these instructions to the people. When you see the Levitical priest carrying the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God, move out from your positions and follow them. Since you have never traveled this way before, they will guide you. Stay about a half a mile behind them, keeping a clear distance between you and the Ark. Make sure you don't come any closer. Then Joshua told the people, purify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do great wonders among you. In the morning, Joshua said to the priests, lift up the Ark of the Covenant and lead the people across the river. And so they started out and went ahead of the people. The Lord told Joshua, today I will begin to make you a great leader in the eyes of all the Israelites. They will know that I am with you just as I was with Moses. Give this command to the priest who carried the Ark of the Covenant. When you reach the banks of the Jordan River, take a few steps into the river and stop there. Today, I just, I just want to preach just for a little while. Simply step in to the river. Step in to the river. Let's lift our hands and pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord God, that you will anoint this service, God. I pray that you will, you will use this word, God, to reach into each and every one of our hearts. Speak to us in a unique way, God. Speak to each of us individually like only you can do, God. I'm praying that as the word goes forth, God, that you connect with people in the way that you want to connect with them and let them hear what they need to hear to, to set them on the right path and to set them on, on a greater path, Lord, and, and to walk in your glory. I pray let it minister to us in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen. 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 You may be seated. If you were here today right now in this room and you were to drive out of the parking lot of this church, head east on Main Street, going that way, for those of you who get directionally challenged in a, in a building, it would be going down Main Street that way, and follow Highway 95 for, for 13 miles in about 15 to 18 minutes, you would be at I-10 at the Doucan exit. From I-10 at the Doucan exit, you are 63 miles from the Mississippi River Bridge. Now, according to Google, that trip down the interstate would take you about 55 minutes-ish. But as, as locals know, if you leave at the wrong time, you're going to queue up about 10 miles from that bridge, and you'll drive an average of 10 to 15 miles an hour all the way across. Now, if you have the patience to do it, which I'm just going to be honest, I don't. I check ways. I don't even go to Baton Rouge if Waze says it's bad. I just say, yeah, Baton Rouge can wait. I'll go to Houston. But if you have the patience to do it, you will cross one of the largest rivers in the world. It's number four on the top five list in all the world. You don't realize that we have such a famous waterway right there in our backyard. At that bridge, the river is 50 feet deep. At that bridge that many of us has crossed. It's almost a half mile wide at that bridge. That isn't anywhere close to the size of the Mississippi River in other areas. The widest part of the Mississippi is said to be 11 miles long at Lake Winnie near Deer River, Minnesota. 11 miles long. Now, really, it's going through a lake, so that's kind of overblown. But the deepest point of that river is 200 feet near Algiers Point in New Orleans. The Mississippi River is a huge river, but it, but it has two ends of the spectrum, per se. The headwaters of the Mississippi can be found in uh, Itasca. Sorry, I'm trying to remember how to say it. Itasca State Park. And I have a picture of it they're going to put on the screen here. If you were to go to Itasca State Park, there people can literally walk across rocks. They can, they can wade through ankle-deep waters at the beginning of the Mississippi River. In, in another place entirely, talking about two spectrums here, between St. St. Paul, Minnesota, and New Orleans, Viking Cruises is setting in 2022, they're starting a cruise line on the Mississippi River between St. Paul, Minnesota, and New Orleans. I'm, I'm talking, this is a spectrum here. There's a wide spectrum of the Mississippi River from small to large. In one spot, a child can, can skip across the river in ankle-deep water. In another spot, cruise ships can traverse the waterway. Now, 
if, if I wanted to, I, there's a leadership lesson in that all by itself. If I was teaching you a lesson on solving problems, I, I would use this story to tell you it's easier to deal with things in their embryo stages. And you can take that all the way from leadership to the spiritual here, to, to, to dealing with sin, to dealing with things. It's easier to deal with things at the very beginning of them. But if you leave things unchecked for too long, they can become like a raging river, and it's hard to get across it. It's hard to overcome. And I'm just, I'm just trying to teach somebody something. It can be difficult to cross. That's not the point of this message, but I, I would be remiss to not use the point to help someone. On another end of, of, of the lessons we can learn, there's a spiritual lesson in this, and, and that's the story of the Mississippi proves that just a small spring, if given time, just a small amount of water, if given time, can become a powerful raging river. So I want to tell somebody else in this room on a whole different level, don't listen to the people who try to judge your anointing at the beginning of your walk with God. I'm just... I'm just trying to tell you, don't get discouraged when people, when, when the naysayers are looking at the beginning of your relationship with God and saying, you'll never amount to nothing because if you will give God time, if you will give God time, he will make something in you that people can't get across, that people can't mess with. I'm just, I hope I'm helping somebody. If we were to judge the beginning of the story of the Apostle Paul, we would only know him as an enemy of the people of God. But something began in him small and became a raging river that changed his world. If we based our judgment of Moses on the beginning of his, of his, of his walk and the beginning of his story, we would know him as a murderer. But when we base our, our judgment later on what he's done, we saw that what began as small, what began as something intent that, that didn't really make much of a difference, became something that changed his world and saved his people. Don't let people judge you at the beginning of the thing. You better stay focused and stay, stay, stay positive and stay walking in what God is calling you to do. What has begun in your life may seem like a small stream, but if you will give it time to flow, if you'll give it time to grow, what is a small bubbling spring today will become a rushing mighty river tomorrow. Don't let the enemy discourage you. Keep your spirits up. Let your anointing grow. I'm telling you, one day soon, God is going to use you to impact this world. If anybody receives that right now, can you clap your hands? None of that's what I'm talking about today. I just wanted to get that out there because it was some good points. Back to the story. Rivers are fascinating to me, and rivers are extremely intimidating to me. I have stood on the banks of the Mississippi River and watched the turbulent water flow. The undertows can be, can't, they can't be predicted at all, and, and, and the power of the undertow can be extremely dangerous. What happens underneath the water when the currents are shifting as that river is flowing through can pull, pull people under, pull things under, and, and it'll pop up later, and it, it can be very dangerous. Years ago, I was actually, I was working at Rapids Regional Medical Center, and for those of you who are immediately got worried, I know Rapids Regional Medical Center is nowhere near the Mississippi River, so it's okay. But the hospital is built right on the side of the Red River that runs in between Alexandria and Pineville, Louisiana. And at the time, the fourth floor of that old patient tower was the medical library, and I remember my very first visit to that spot at the medical library. There was kind of a, a, a somewhat oversized window there, and, and, and as I walked up to, me and a coworker was there to work on a ticket, I looked out over the Red River, and it was a perfect view of the waters flowing by, and, and I became mesmerized by that, that river. And my coworker saw the interest that I had taken in the river, mainly because he was doing all the work, and I was just staring out the window. And he said something that, that, that really shook me up. He, he, first, he began kind of talking about the history of the Red River. He was a local. He knew a lot about what, you know, that area, and I was not a local. And so he, he was telling me about the history of it, and then he said something kind of jarred me. He said, every now and then, one of these locals or somebody will come in from out of town, and they'll get the bright idea that they can swim the Red River. And sometimes they're successful, but Every few years, someone will try it, and they will drown. And he said, it's amazing how many people don't respect the power of the river. Well, he didn't have to worry me at all, because I respect the power of the river. If I'm honest, I, I've always been a little afraid of, of rivers. I, I respect the power that they have. I respect the currents. I respect the things I can't see in that river. 
There, there, are many, there are too many unknown circumstances in regards to a river. And, and so with a healthy respect to the power of rivers, I can relate to how the children of Israel must have felt in the book of Joshua as they stood on the banks of the Jordan River. You see, for 40 years, the children of Israel had journeyed in the wilderness. They had learned how to walk with God, learned how to trust in God. They had, they had been attacked by the enemy. They had even overcome the enemy. They had seen God do the miraculous, and they had seen God's judgment. During this 40-year period, a new generation had risen up. An old generation had passed away, and a new generation had grown up in the wilderness. And, and this generation, it was a generation that only knew of the miracle at the Red Sea through stories and through distant memories. If they were alive then, they were just small. It was a distant memory. And if, if they weren't alive then, it was, it was stories. It was stories that, that, that they had heard. Someone passed down a generation. This was a generation that had heard about the promises of God for the people, but they had become accustomed to living in the judgment era of God. In the book of Joshua, we find a particular tumultuous time for the children of Israel. And it was, it was uncomfortable because it represented a, a transition time. First, there was a transition of leadership from Moses to Joshua. God had used Moses to deliver his people from bondage. He had used Moses to build the foundation of how the people of Israel would act, build a foundation of how the people of Israel would worship, how they would follow God. But now he was about to use Joshua to bring them into the promise. And the Jordan River was the place of transition. So it was, it was, a, it was a tumultuous time. Next, this was also a transition of assignment. You see, for 40 years, the assignment was to draw closer to God. They were in a learning mode. Everything was designed on bringing the children of Israel closer. God was trying, having to teach them how to follow him and how to trust him. They were having to learn how to hear the voice of God and learn how to follow spiritual leadership that God had placed in their lives. But now, now they had a new assignment. No longer were they in learn mode. They were about to enter live mode. It's different. The assignment was shifting from hearing of the promise to walking into the promise. The only thing is there was an obstacle in their way. Now see, sometimes we forget that before there was a Jericho, there was a Jordan River. Before they faced a walled city, they had to face a flooded river. And a flooded river is no joke. A flooded river is a powerful river. A flooded river is dangerous, and you know it. You can see it's dangerous. Any river may deter a casual swimmer, but a flooded river will deter even the strongest of swimmers. So I imagine how the children of Israel must have felt. The promise was right in front of them, but there was a river. The blessing was right in front of them, but there, there was a river there. The next level was right in front of them, but right, right there was a river. And so Joshua 3 and 9, we, we follow this story again and we hear, Joshua told the Israelites, come and listen to what the Lord your God says. Today you will know that the living God is among you. He will surely drive out the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Hevites, the Perizzites, the Gargashites, the Amorites, and the Jebusites ahead of you. Look, the Ark of the Covenant, which belongs to the Lord of the whole earth, will lead you across the Jordan River. Now choose 12 men from the tribes of Israel, one from each tribe. The priest will carry the Ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, as soon, here we go, as soon as their feet touch the water. The flow of water will be cut off upstream, and the river will stand up like a wall. So the people left their camp to cross the Jordan, and the priests who were carrying the Ark of the Covenant went ahead of them. It was the harvest season, and the Jordan was overflowing its banks. But as soon as the feet of the priests who were carrying the Ark touched the water at the river's edge, the water above that point began backing up a great distance away at a town called Adam, which is near Zarethan. And the water below that point flowed onto the Dead Sea until the riverbed was dry. Then all the people crossed over near the town of Jericho. And here is the word God has given me today. We have feared the river long enough. The Jordan River looked like a hindrance to the promise for the children of Israel. 
But today it is celebrated as the place they inherited their promise. And in like manner, what you thought was an obstacle to your promise will simply be the beginning of your miracle. What you thought was a hindrance to your blessing is simply the beginning of something miraculous. What you have feared as an obstruction to your next level is about to be the place you overcame the enemy. And it is your next step. All you need to do is step into the river. All you need to do is step into the river. And I'm here to declare to someone today, I don't know who it is I'm reaching for, who it is I'm preaching to, but I'm asking you, I'm telling you, I'm pleading, step into that river. Because as soon as your feet touch the water, the wonder-working power of God is going to be activated in your life. And what you thought could never be accomplished is going to be accomplished because you obeyed and you said, I will not be afraid of the obstacle in front of me. I will step forward into the promise. Step into the river. We talk about it a lot. We sing about it a lot. We say soon there's going to be a miracle. Soon my family will will be rekindled. Soon I will be healed. Soon I will see something happen in my life. Soon I will be used in a greater way. But every single time we say soon, we just step back and we watch the river. We're afraid to step into the river. So we say soon. Soon. It's going to happen soon. But the promise is right there. The promised land is right there. All we have to do is step into the river. The time is now, church. Your deliverance isn't for tomorrow. Your deliverance is for today. The blessing is not for later. The blessing is for now. Your promise is not a future thing. Your promise is right now. The river is not your obstacle. The river is part of your promise. I'm looking today at a spiritual generation on the cusp of transition. Let me explain. When the children of Israel crossed over the Jordan River, everything changed in their life. The Bible says in Joshua 5 that that no manna appeared, Joshua 5 and 12, no manna appeared on the day they first ate from the crops of the land. Literally the first day they ate from the land, the the promised land, no manna appeared anymore. It was never seen again. So from that time on, the Israelites ate from the crops of Canaan. I want to break that down. Until that day, And I'm I'm talking to somebody. I hope you can hear this. Until that day, they had survived each day on just enough. Just enough manna to make it one more day. Just enough provision to make it one more day. Oh, yeah, yeah, they had a testimony. Oh, yeah, they they talked about it. We got up this morning and God provided again. Every day was just enough. But after they stepped into the river... No longer would God provide just enough. Now he was providing a land that flowed with milk and honey. And and, and he was saying, there's going to be an abundance there, but you're going to be required and responsible to work that land so that you can partake of this abundance. I'm going to give you a plot twist right here. It's easier to stay where you are. It was easier for them to stay where they are. There were less enemies in the promised land, in the wilderness. Way more enemies in the promised land. There was less responsibility in the wilderness. There was less work in the wilderness. So why step into the river at all? Why? I'll tell you why. Because you see, on the other side of that was abundance. On the other side of that river was was a promise that had been given. On the other side of that river was their God-given purpose. Joy was on the other side of that river. Victory was on the other side of that river. The miraculous was on the other side of that river. On the other side of that river was their next level. They had been called for more than just wandering aimlessly through life. I'm talking to somebody. You have been called for more than just walking aimlessly through life. You have been built with a purpose, and you're on the edge of your miracle. 
I'm speaking to a generation that God is ready to transition you into your promise. And no longer will you survive on just enough. But that where you are going, there will be an abundance of anointing. There will be an abundance of the flow of the Holy Ghost. There will be an abundance in your life of doing the will of God and God stepping into every situation. Don't confuse this now. It doesn't mean you won't have to work for it. It doesn't mean you won't have to work the land. You won't have to follow the will of God. But there will be an abundance there. There will be victory on the other side. There will be joy on the other side. There will be a purpose for you on the other side. There will be another level for you on the other side. And I'm declaring to you today, your promise is waiting on your next step. Your promise is waiting on your next step. So step in to the river. Step in to the river. The miraculous is going to happen in your life when you step into the river. It's going to happen in your life. I know, I know stepping into the river is going to bring change. I know stepping into the river marks a transition in your life. I know stepping into the river will bring forth the unknown. But God has sent me today to encourage someone. It's time for your transition. You have waited long enough. You have prepared long enough. You have learned long enough. Step in. Step in to the river. God has prepared your next step. God has prepared your personal promised land. Here's the thing. It's going to look different than you imagined. It's going to look different. It will be a new season. It won't be like anything you've experienced before. It will bring new challenges and new enemies, but it comes with a promised provision. The blessings of God will come when you step into that river. The anointing will come when you step into that river. The miraculous will happen when you step into that river. I'm reminded of another transition in 2 Kings chapter 2. This story is about the prophet Elijah and his servant Elisha. 2 Kings 2 verse 6 says, Then Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, stay here, for the Lord has told me to go to the Jordan River. But Elisha replied, As surely as the Lord lives and you yourself live, I will never leave you. So they went together. When When it would have been easier to stay, he went with him. Fifty men from the group of prophets also went and watched from a distance as Elijah and Elisha stepped beside the Jordan River. Then Elijah folded his cloak together and struck the water with it. The river divided and the two of them went across on dry ground. When they came to the other side, Elijah said to Elisha, tell me what I can do for you before I'm taken away. And Elisha replied, please let me inherit a double share of your spirit and become your successor. Verse 10 says, you have asked a difficult thing, Elijah replied. If you see me when I'm taken from you, then you will get your request. But if if not, then you won't. It would have been easier to me for him to just say yes or no. But sometimes when we're asking for more, God has to put a caveat in there. I'm just telling somebody in here, we like to ask for more, but the moment the caveat comes in there, if if you do this, then I will. We don't want any part of it anymore. And I'm just trying to tell somebody, if you want to really go to your next level, there's going to be a caveat. There's going to be something you have to do. There's going to be a, you're going to have to walk by his side. You're Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of the caveat that comes with us asking for the next level. God will provide it. If he wants you to do it, he will provide the way for you to do it. Don't be afraid of that stuff. You've asked a difficult thing. If you see me, though, when I'm taken from you, then you will get your request. But if you choose to not, it'll pass you by. As they were walking along and talking, suddenly a chariot of fire appeared. Drawn by horses of fire, it drove between the two men, separating them. And Elijah was carried by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elijah saw it and cried out, My father, my father, I see the chariots and charioteers of Israel. And as they disappeared from sight, Elisha tore his clothes in distress. See, Elisha was with Elijah when God took him away. He had fulfilled the requirement to receive a double portion. He had done all that was necessary to receive promise the only thing still standing in his way was a river the only thing standing in his way see a normal person 
A normal person might have set up a memorial right there in that spot where Elijah was taken into heaven. A would, would have been satisfied with telling the story, wearing the badge of honor. I was with Elijah. I was with Elijah. I saw him when he went into heaven. They would have been happy with the badge of honor. It would have been totally understandable for, for, for Elijah to walk away from that moment and live his life with a good story. A testimony of what he saw happen. Few would have faulted him for not stepping back into that river. But you see, Elisha had a promise. And the time of transition was upon him. So in verse 13, Elisha picked up Elijah's cloak, which had fallen when he was taken up. Then Elisha returned to the bank of the Jordan River. He struck the water with Elijah's cloak, and he cried out, Where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? And the river divided, and Elisha went across. And I need someone to understand me today. If you have the courage to step up to that river, God is going to perform a miracle. If you have the courage to not just talk about what could be and step into the moment and say, I will step into this river, God is going to do a miracle in your life. God has sent me to tell someone, now is the time. It's the season for your promise. You have learned all the right lessons. You have walked all the right paths. Everything you have been through, God has orchestrated to get you to this moment in time, this place, this, this, this moment right now in this world. God has brought you here for such a time as this. It's time to step into the river. It's time to step into the river. I believe I'm speaking to someone that God has been preparing for a specific purpose. He created you for a reason. All you have been through is not an accident. The wilderness moments you have been in were not an accident. The time waiting was not an accident. The time learning was not an accident. He has been preparing you for a purpose, and now is the time. But there is a river between you and your promise. There is a river. There will always be a river between you and your next level. There will always be a river as you try to transition to what God is calling you into. To get to your promise, you have to step in to that river. Like the children of Israel, they had to walk with nothing happening in front of them. They had to get to the banks of the river, and when nothing changed, they had to step in for God to begin performing that miracle. I believe I'm speaking to someone that God wants to take you to another level. Maybe you have felt God moving in your life. You've noticed the divine hand on your life, his divine hand on your life. And you, you've seen him shaping things and preparing things. And you want to follow him to your next level. But, but fear has reared its ugly head. I want to speak to fear right now. Stepping into the unknown will never be comfortable. Stepping into a new season is always scary. Stepping into your calling can be very frightening. I've, I've seen it with my own eyes. The enemy will do everything he can to keep you from taking a step towards your promise. Nothing makes him happier than a group of people afraid to step into the river. As long as the river separated the children of Israel from the promised land, the enemy was safe. But when the children of Israel stepped into the river and the miraculous happened, it marked the end of the, or the beginning of the end of the enemy's reign in Canaan. Joshua 5 and 1 says this, when all the Amorite kings west of the Jordan, all the Canaanite kings who lived along the Mediterranean coast heard how the Lord had dried up the Jordan River so the people of Israel could cross, they lost heart and were paralyzed with fear because of them. The enemy doesn't want you to step into the river. In fact, the enemy will try to make you comfortable where you are. As long as you don't step into that river, he wins. I know the unknown brings fear. I know that stepping into the river requires faith. But you were not made to live in fear. Psalms 27 and 1 says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. So why should I be afraid? The Lord is my fortress protecting me from danger. So why should I tremble? I'm preaching to someone right now. Don't let fear win in your life. Don't let comfort win out in your life. Don't let the enemy win in your life. Go ahead. Step in to the river. Step into your promise. We could stand here today. I realize I've spent the entirety of my message talking about why we should step into the river. The entirety of it. 
telling you why. And if I had been successful on any level, if I had been successful in any way, somewhere right now, here or online, there's someone asking how. I hear you, and I want to do it, and I, and I want to exercise my faith, but how do I step in? How do I step into this river you're talking about? See, I've been using a tangible example of a literal river juxtaposed against the spiritual concept of taking a step of faith. And sometimes the point can ring home, but the action isn't clear. So to someone that is looking for clarity, wherever you are, let me give you clarity right now. Your miracle will begin when you take your next step in your walk with God. And every next step is different. For someone here today, God has been orchestrating things in your life. You see him and you feel him in your life, but you don't have the spirit of God in you yet. If you have never received the filling of the Holy Ghost with evidence of speaking in other tongues, I'm going to give you clarity. Your next step is asking God to fill you with the Holy Ghost. And that can happen in this place. That can happen in the space you're in. That can happen wherever you're listening to this word. All you have to do is step in to the river. To someone else, you have never been baptized in Jesus' name fully immersed in water in the precious name of Jesus. Your next step here today is baptism. This can happen today right here. Step into the river. For another, you have allowed yourself to fall away from where you once were with God. You've allowed sin to enter in in some way, some form, some fashion. It has driven you away from the glory of God and you know you're not where you should be. Your next step is simply repentance. Today, you can turn from your wicked ways. Today, you can be restored back into the presence of God. Right here, right now. Today, you can repent. It's your next step. Step into the river. For someone else, you feel the tug of God in your life. A call to go deeper. A call to go further. A call to enter into the promise. A call to another level. For you, for you, it may be your next step is serving. Your next step may be joining a point group. Your next step may be leading a point group. And I know I risk the crowd by moving from the abstract to the tangible. I know that. But I believe God is waiting for someone to move from the abstract to the tangible in their walk with God. And if I don't tell you how to do it, woe is me. I believe God is trying to get somebody to move from what could have been to what should be and what will be if we step into the river. Today can be your day. If you have questions about your next step and I haven't given you the clarity right now in this room, right at the end of this service, you can go to our Start Here booth and we will help you find clarity. If you're online, you can go to point.church slash next and there you can fill out a form and we will call you and help you find your next level. I believe that God is calling each of us to our next level. No matter where you are in your walk with God, I believe there is more. I believe there is a greater anointing for you. I believe there is a greater power for you. I believe there is a greater relationship with God that you can achieve I believe there's more but it's time to step into the river our prayer team is coming to the front right now and I just want to tell you right now if you are ready for your miracle now is the time if you are ready for your next level right now is the time if you're ready to see God move in your family, now is the time. If you're ready to see God do the impossible, now is the time. Today there is healing. Today there is peace. Today there is joy. Today there is strength. Today there is a fresh anointing. Today there is a deeper level. Step into the river. If you need something today, you come on up right now. You don't have to wait for me to be finished. Just come on up right now. Lift your hands towards heaven. And our prayer team will begin ministering and praying with you. And I'm believing with you that you will reach your next level. For everyone else in the room, if you feel comfortable, if you can step towards the front and begin to worship God and begin to give him praise for what he's doing in other people's lives, I believe that God is about to pour out his spirit on this world like never before. I believe God is about to use this church to do things that we could only, that we've never even been able to imagine. I believe God wants to use you to do greater things than you ever thought possible. But it's going to take us stepping into the river. It's going to take us not thinking that one day it's going to happen, but saying right now is the time. Right now is the moment. I'm stepping into the river. Whether I feel it or whether I don't feel it, I'm walking in and I'm believing the miraculous will happen when I step in.
work in this room. I believe God wants to do something for someone right now, maybe in this room, maybe online, wherever you are. If you need something from God, it's, it's time to act with faith. It's time to step into that river with faith. It's time to take this step. Maybe it's something you have been afraid to ask God for. You've been afraid. What happens if it doesn't happen? I want to tell you right now, don't be afraid that what you're asking for may not happen. Go ahead and put it out there with faith and let God make that decision instead of you making that decision. What happens when we don't ask is we make the decision for for God ourselves but let's let God be God in our lives and let's put what we need out there and let's say God I need you in this situation so wherever you are can you lift your hands towards heaven I want to pray the prayer of faith over you right now and I'm believing God is going to move in your life there will be healings that take place there will be deliverance that takes place all we have to do is step in right now in faith lift your hands right now father in the name of Jesus I pray God you see the needs Lord I'm not asking anything that, that I'm not trying to say great words of wisdom I'm not trying to give great acts of faith here I'm just saying God you see the need Lord you are God of all things you're God of this world you're, you're bigger than we could ever imagine you can take it there is nothing too hard for my God so Lord I'm saying I'm asking act now in every need Lord do what only you can do let healing flow let the anointing flow let the glory flow break through right now in people's lives in Jesus name in Jesus name you Thanks for joining our online worship experience. We hope it has been a blessing to you and your family. We would love to connect with you. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube, or you can go to www.point.church and connect with us there. If you'd like to partner with us in giving, you could download our app, or you could go to point.church and click give. Thank you so much for joining us today. We look forward to worshiping with you again soon.